So before he left for the G20 summit, President Biden shared U.S. intelligence about the Poland missile strike uh, before he left where you are, I should say, uh, about the Poland missile strike uh, with world leaders at the G20 summit. What did he tell them? What he told them, Anne-Marie, was that uh, this missile likely did not originate in Russia, um, that it probably originated in Ukraine as Ukraine was trying to defend itself against this barrage of dozens of missiles that were fired by Russia into western Ukraine, striking all over the country, um, the capital, Kiev, and other locations uh, aimed at, at energy facilities across the country. Uh, and so, therefore, uh, it didn't appear that this was some kind of new escalation by Russia against NATO countries like Poland, but rather an attempt by uh, Ukraine to defend itself against Russia that had gone awry. It really was quite a scene here in Bali. This was supposed to be sort of a ceremonial uh, closing day of the G20 summit. They were going to be planting some trees, um, holding a few final meetings. Instead, what we saw was this big scramble uh, between President Biden and other G7 leaders to huddle in a room and try to figure out exactly what had happened. Um, uh, piece together uh, the, the situation and then try to figure out how to respond in the context of this larger summit that has been uh, in large part about the economic havoc that has been wreaked by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, whether you're talking about food shortages or fuel shortages or inflation, any number of economic problems now affecting countries around the world um, because, uh, you know, because these two major countries, uh, Russia and Ukraine, are at war. So the president, Nancy, has said there will be a meeting of NATO ambassadors. Uh, what does that entail and what could result right. from that meeting? So that meeting has now taken place in Brussels. This are, these are the uh, the 30 NATO member countries sending their, their ambassadors to NATO all to have a meeting to discuss this. And obviously this was of great concern when they didn't know where the missile had originated because had Russia fired a missile intentionally into Poland, that would have potentially triggered Article 5 of the, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which states that whenever one NATO country is attacked, the other allies uh, come to its aid, come to its defense, setting up this potentially very volatile situation, a possible nuclear standoff between the U.S. and Russia. Um, uh, the, the NATO Secretary General came out after that meeting, said it, it doesn't appear that NATO is going to take any official action now that we know that uh, Russia did not likely fire this missile into Poland. But he still argued that this is all Russia's fault, uh, not letting Russia off the hook. After all, uh, had Russia not been bombarding you know, Ukraine with missiles, not just this week, but for the past nine months, Ukraine would have had no reason to fire off its own missile in self-defense that then uh, appears to have gone awry, landed in Poland and killed two Polish citizens. So uh, the NATO allies are still placing the blame here squarely in Russia's lap. Uh, the G20 summit wrapped up and earlier you, you had talked to us about um, a statement that was going to be released, a position on Ukraine and the war there. But you mm -hmm. said that the plan was to have yeah. all 20 members sign it, which would be odd because Russia is a member. Can you talk to us about that statement yeah. and did all 20 members sign it? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so this came out from all 20 member countries, a very unusual communique uh, in in the light of the, the current situation here, because uh, they had to figure out something that they could say that everyone would agree to. And clearly there's a variety of opinions here about Russia's invasion. Um, the bulk of countries here, of course, condemn Russia's invasion. Then you've got Russia, which is, you know, still carrying out this invasion. The Russian foreign minister was here in Bali. And then you've got this group of countries, uh, India, China, Indonesia, that have been really reluctant to openly criticize Russia because of their political or economic ties to that country. And so this communique came out that stated that most of the G20 members uh, condemn Russia's actions, condemn uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but that there is a variety of opinions about it. That was about as far as they were able to go hmm. and still get all of these major countries to sign on. But still, the fact that they were even able to go that far was notable. Indeed, Nancy. Thank you very much. You're welcome.